Hi, and welcome to MSC. This is the inaugural lesson. And in this lesson, we're talking about components of a vector. As you can see, I've already drawn a vector here, and I'm going to call it vector D. Components kind of mean like parts of a whole. Right? If you're thinking about components of a cabinet that you'd need to put the cabinet together, those would be the pieces required. And so we can break vectors into their parts, into their pieces, just like you could break a cabinet down into its pieces. Now in two dimensions, the way I've drawn this, we can break a vector into two. In three dimensions, we could break a vector into three parts. Now this vector looks like it runs from the uh, it runs to the right and up. So let's look at what these components would look like on the page. So we would have one component that carries you over to the right, as this vector does. And we would also have another component that carries you up on the page. And by adding these two components together, we'll get the overall vector D. Now, because vector D is a vector and not a scalar, it not only has size, magnitude, like how long it is, but it also has to have an angle, some type of direction associated with it. So let's assume that this angle theta here had been provided to us. Now, this could have been the angle above a horizontal, or it could have been maybe an angle north of the eastward direction. Either way, we are able to now determine some values about the components. Let's name these components. The one that runs horizontally we'll call dx. x is typically the horizontal variable, just like on a graph. The vertical one we'll call d sub y. So these are subscripts x and y that indicate the direction that the component represents. So dx is running in the regular horizontal x direction, and dy represents the component, the part of vector D, that is responsible for its vertical shift from start to finish in the upwards, a positive y direction. Furthermore, because x and y are orthogonal, they're perpendicular to one another, this has formed a right triangle. And that right triangle now allows us to perform all the trigonometric functions tangent, cosine, and sine on this triangle. And that, in turn, allows us to determine equations for dx and dy, respectively. Let's look at dx first. So dx is the adjacent side to the angle. So in the trigonometry, if you think back to SOHCAHTOA, or whatever you use to memorize those primary trig functions, we know that tangent has an adjacent side because tangent is opposite over adjacent and we also know that cosine has an adjacent side because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse well i don't know anything about this dy which is the opposite side but in this type of problem i typically do know my d value i know the hypotenuse i know the length of the vector so that makes cosine an excellent choice for this so let's look at the cosine function. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, instead of calling it adjacent and hypotenuse, we will refer to the adjacent side as d sub x, and we'll refer to the hypotenuse as the vector d. What I'm really interested in finding here is the side length dx. That's what I'm trying to create an equation for. So we can rearrange for dx. And we can do so by instead of dividing by d, the opposite operation is to multiply. So we can multiply both sides by d. And in doing so, I will have a cancellation that occurs on this side. The result is therefore that dx is equal to d cos theta. Interesting. So this is an equation that we have now for dx. 
Let's repeat this with dy. So dy is the opposite side. dy is opposite from the theta the way this is drawn. That won't always be the case, although it typically is. The opposite side is contained in, tan in tangent because it's opposite over adjacent. It's also contained in sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Again, the adjacent we just defined here, whereas the hypotenuse is known, so we'll work with the hypotenuse here, which means we're going to be working with the sine function. So sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Excellent. And so we can rewrite, just like we did over on the other example, we can rewrite the opposite side as d sub y and the hypotenuse as vector d. So sine theta is equal to the ratio of d sub y to d. Just like we did in the previous example now, we can multiply both sides by d because that's using the opposite operation to move it across the equal sign. This will allow us then to cancel the d's on this side and give me a resulting equation that says dy is equal to d sine theta. Now, if you're moving on in physics and considering using components a lot, these are excellent starting points for you to jump right into. And it would be useful to not have to go through these derivations every time you'd like to draw uh, or determine the equation for a component. How this works is x won't always relate to cos and y won't always relate to sine, although that's typically how it will go. But what we can say is that the side of the component that is adjacent to the theta will always be of this form, where it will be the hypotenuse, the vector that you're trying to decompose, and cosine of the angle. And sine will always be the component that is opposite to that angle. And so dy, in this case, is d sine theta. So these are excellent starting points in terms of uh, working with vectors moving forward. I hope this brief rundown of breaking a vector into its components has been helpful. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching.